If you're someone who has just bought yourself a Bamboo Lab printer and is just getting it set up, this video is for you. Today, I just wanna share with you a few tips that you need to know before you start your first print with your new Bamboo Lab model. Now, on this channel, I have reviewed both the X1 series, the P1, and I'm just finishing my review of the A1 Mini right now. There are though a couple of things that I have spotted that new users tend to come up against when they've just got their printer. And in this video, I just wanna highlight them so your first print will go as smoothly as possible. Now, I am also gonna be making a complete walkthrough of doing some printing on the Bamboo Labs 3D printers. I'm gonna be sharing that on this channel in the near future. And if you're interested in seeing that or my review on those printers, please do make sure you do subscribe. And I'll put a link to my review of the X1, the P1 and the A1 when it's released below in the description. Now, the things I'm gonna talk about here may seem quite basic. However, they do trip up new users, especially people who have never 3D printed before. So let's get on with it and let's talk about filament first of all. If you've bought yourself one of the bamboo models with an AMS, you may get some nice sample filament included that come in packets like this. Whilst you may think all of these are the same, there is actually a bit of a red herring in these that will trip you up on your first print if you're not careful. All of the filaments usually come wrapped like this. Now you will usually get at least one spool of PLA. It will usually be wrapped in a bag like that. This is one of those here, which is partly filled. They tend to include a green one or an orange one like I've got here. You may have something like this, which is PAHT carbon fiber, and you will also probably have this, which is white support for PLA. Now, many people actually confuse this for a normal spool of filament and use it to try their first print. If you don't know what this is, it's not actually proper printing filament. It is special filament that is designed to be used for supports, allowing you to do more complex prints. It is not though a filament that will print properly. So when you get your filaments with your new 3D printer, you need to make sure the one you're choosing for your first prints is PLA, and this should not be used for standard prints at all. Now, most people who have ended up using this find their print comes out completely terrible. It will look like a melted ice cream. If they print the Benchy, it will not print properly at all. So if you're getting issues with your first print on your bamboo, check the filament you're using. Don't use this support white. You can identify it fairly easily. When you look at it here off a spool, this is one I actually took apart. It has a bit of a semi shine to it. It's sort of an off white color, but when it prints, it gives a very sort of shiny effect. It looks almost silk, I will say, and you should be able to easily identify that it isn't traditional standard white. It is surprising how many people get caught out by this, and that's the reason I wanted to highlight this at the start of the video. Next, I wanna talk about the build plates. Now, depending on what printer you've got will depend on what build plate you receive. You may also find in the box, though, a little glue stick like this here. There is a lot of confusion out there what this is for, and this can lead to issues with people's first prints sticking to the bed, but also even potentially damaging the bed as well. So what we're gonna do next is explain what this is all about. Here, as you can see, we have two different Bamboo Lab build plates. We have the cool plate, which comes with the X1, and then we have the gold plate, which is coming with the P1S. Now, in the pack for both of these printers, you will probably find a glue stick, and this is something that does confuse people. Many people think the glue stick is actually to help your print stick to the bed. Whilst it will help with first layer adhesion on some build plates, the glue stick is actually designed to help release the print from the build plate and stop you damaging the sensitive sheet. Now, you don't actually need to use this with all of the sheets, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute, but what I would say is this, before you do anything on your build plate on your printer, the first thing you should do is wash it thoroughly. It doesn't matter if it is this plate here or this plate here, these plates will come with some residue on board, and whilst they may look clean, they may not be, and this can affect your first layer sticking. 
My advice on these is to wash them with soapy warm water. Do not use anything like isopropyl alcohol or anything like that. Even isopropyl can actually leave residue. The best thing you can do with a brand new build plate is take it to the sink, give it a good wash with typical soap and water. Make sure then that you completely rinse it and dry it before you do anything. Then, once you've done that, it's time to decide on if you need glue stick. If you are using this, the new textured PEI plate, you should not need to use glue stick with it. There is no great need to use glue stick on this sheet. If it's nice and clean, your print should stick without any problems at all. However, there is no need to use the glue stick to help release the print because the chances of damaging this sheet are very, very low. If you were having first layer sticking issues on this plate, there are a few things you can do. You could use glue stick if you wanted to, but my advice is to use something like this. This is 3D Lac. It's basically hairspray. This gives a slight tackiness to the sheet and it helps the first layer stick without problems. And it's something I've used many times over the years. And if you don't have any of this, it is worth picking up a tin. With regards to the cool plate you see here, this is where the glue stick is important. You can see on the cool plate side, you can see it does mention glue stick can help. This is less about making sure the print actually sticks to the bed and more about being able to release it. Now I've cleaned this plate and the best way to do this is you don't really need to cover the whole sheet in glue if you're not printing over that whole area. If you're only going to be printing in an area in the middle, you could just put the glue there. As for how much to put on, it's really straightforward. All I tend to do is take my glue stick, I tend to start at one side and I am going to do the whole sheet for the purposes of this video, but what you would do is just simply do it where you intend to print, a layer up and down all the way along until you've covered the whole sheet over. It doesn't need to be ridiculously thick. You're not looking to have clumps of it on the plate. You are simply looking to have an even coat over the sheet. You will find some people may say it's just as easy to put a chunk on and then move it around with some isopropyl alcohol. Personally, I don't do it that way. All I tend to do is just rub it like that. Make sure where there is anything a bit thick, we just rub it back. Don't worry if you do get lumps of it like that. As soon as you actually put the build plate on and heat it up, the glue will actually settle and level up over the build plate and it won't have any effect on the first layer other than it will help it stick. But the most important thing is it will help it release when the print finishes. The very basic rule on all of these build plates, as I have already said, is the number one thing to do is clean it and make sure it is absolutely spotless. Again, warm soap and water, even if it is brand new, make sure you dry it properly and then you should be good to go. If you're using this kind of sheet here, whether it be the engineering or the cool plate, make sure that you do use some glue stick. It can help with the first layer sticking, but the most important thing is about making sure that the print doesn't stick too much. If you're using Using the gold plate, something like 3D Lac can help. You can use glue stick, but personally, I stick to 3D Lac, and that pretty much makes sure everything goes exactly to plan. The final advice I want to give before wrapping this video up is keep it simple. All of the Bamboo Lab printers come with pre-sliced files on board that are designed to be used with the Bamboo Lab PLA filament. You could use these with third-party filaments, but most of the printers do come with a sample. My advice for your first print is to simply select, say, the Benchy that they do include on the printer, put in the Bamboo Lab PLA and let it print and make sure everything behaves exactly as expected. I have seen people try to go down the road of doing things like using that carbon fiber filament and it is simply not worth it at the start. What you wanna do is try the pre-sliced file first of all, then move into the bamboo slicer, bring your own file in, keep it again something nice and simple, like a benchy or something very small. Make sure you have the filament set correctly because many printing problems are actually related to the wrong filament being selected in the slicer compared to the actual filament that you have in the printer. So again, try to stick to PLAs and then move on to the more advanced things later, like the carbon fibers, the PETGs or the ABSs. 
One last thing to mention on those pre-sliced files is don't worry if they don't come out absolutely perfect. You can see here, this is one of the benches that comes with the bamboo printers. And you can see there's a bit of a line around here and there is a couple of areas where it doesn't look perfect. That is absolutely normal. Those pre-sized files have been done in such a way to demonstrate not only the printer's capability, but its speed as well. And a fast benchy that is done in under an hour may have things like this hull line around here that is as a result of the difference in cooling. It's a complex issue that I'm not going to get into in this video, but don't worry if you see things like this on your first fast print that come from the pre-sliced files. Absolutely normal. There is always a payoff with three printing on quality versus speed and as a result of that you can get some imperfections like this. So that is it for this video. It was never designed to be a big one. It was to cover off the very basic things that I see posted around Facebook and other places on a daily basis. As I've said, if you're interested in seeing the reviews on these printers, there will be a link to them in the description. And I'll be releasing a full first print guide on this channel in the near future. And if you're interested in seeing that, please do make sure you are subscribed. Finally, I just want to say, if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description. Stay safe and I will speak to you soon.